Hi, welcome to another episode of Quick Flicks brought to you by Summit Racing. Today we're going to look at some power tuning and tech tips uh, for tuning on the Holley 4150-4160 series performance four barrel carburetors. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about power tuning. I want to approach this, um, this topic today in the same way that we laid out the series on the 4150, 4160 performance four barrels from Holly. So the first thing we looked at originally was the inlet circuit. So let's take a look at that today, okay? Now I've got most of this loosened up, so we can just buzz this apart here real quick. Take a look at what our inlet circuit was, right? Okay, you stay there for a minute. Nope, it's not going to. All right, so let's just set that right there. All right, so our inlet circuit was our line in, our, our bowl, uh, the, the, the inlet fitting, uh, my float, we talked about floats, the hinge, uh, my needle and seat beyond that, right? Okay, and previously we had said that maybe you wanna keep uh, the fuel level at the bottom of the threads uh, for a street car or for a driver, okay? Now as you become more competitive or, or more, uh, more drag race or left and right race or what a type of racing you become more competitive and dedicated toward that line, you wanna consider using fuel level to your advantage. So I would encourage you to think about bringing the fuel level up toward the middle of the bowl, okay? Now, if you are experienced, and this takes a little bit of time to get the feel for this, if you have a, uh, the, the sight plug type of bowl, uh, it's a little harder to, bring, to, to get yourself elevated above the threads because I can only go uh, with my plug out till I reach the bottom of the threads, obviously, because once I get past that, I start to spill fuel out, okay? But I can get a feel for it by lowering my, th my, my fuel level down and saying, oh, I can see that I'm maybe a millimeter or so below and then adjusting up to my threads and saying, oh, you know what? I turned that a flat and a half for about a one millimeter difference. So then I can go ahead and put my sight plug in at that point and then go ahead and make another flat and a half adjustment and know pretty confidently that I am now a millimeter up from the bottom of my thread, so now perhaps instead of being down here, I'm now up here. Okay, so I'm, I'm headed towards the middle of my bowl or of my sight window uh, instead of being lower, okay? And the reason is you wanna have more fuel standing by in the bowl. You wanna have fuel coming in quicker also. Uh, previously we had talked about the inlet circuit also with, uh, with fuel pressure. Uh, I think I recommended like four, five, or six PSI for the street. Here, as you become more aggressive, as you start building more horsepower, as you become more competitive, I would encourage you to consider going toward the maximum, and that would be like seven or eight PSI. Now, I know there are racers out there that will put eight and a half, nine, even 10 PSI on their Holly. I would not recommend going that large on the pressure side, even for competition. Having a solid 8 PSI delivered across the full RPM range of any given horsepower level or displacement should be more than adequate. The, the, the problem is, is that some of these guys uh, might only have 8 PSI at idle and they'll drop off uh, to 5 or 6 PSI at a higher RPM so they will set their base or curb uh, idle speed pressure to 10 knowing that that should effectively give them 6, 7, or 8 at the higher RPM. I understand why they do it, but it's, Holly does not recommend anything beyond eight PSI, so that's what I'm gonna stay with. All right, so a couple tricks there on our inlet side. Um, let's see, any, also, uh, as you start getting out there toward that horse per cube area, you at least wanna be into a 3 8 line. When you start considering four, 450, five, 550 like that, I would really consider a dedicated supply system for your fuel line probably leaving the 3 8 or, or a dash six and definitely considering half inch stuff or dash eight. When, when you move beyond that level, it's quite possible that you could be on a 5 8 hard line or a dash, um, dash 10 AN for your fuel supply, okay? 
There are some really enormous fuel delivery systems in the higher horsepower professional cars. Uh, so size does matter, no pun intended, and I'm letting that one go. Sorry, sorry I even said it. So uh, let's talk about the, the idle circuit then, okay? So remember Mr. Idle. Idle circuit was good. Um, and we, we, I kind of alluded to some of the things about the idle circuit, like if you had a crazy cam that we would discuss that at this time. So that's what I want to do. If I've got a really incredible build, my, my, the motor of a lifetime, or one of my motors that I really love, and it's got a really big cam, it's, it's a thumper, it's got large overlap, it, needs, it has virtually no vacuum at idle. And, and I've got it, because of that, I have to set my curb idle speed way up, okay? So where I'm really tipping into my throttle position already, this is the type of stuff that I want to cover here for us in this next moment or two, okay? So I'm just going to let this drop by the wayside for a moment. What's happening is I increase my curb idle, okay, my curb idle, I move my, my throttle position, I increase the tip in of my throttle plates down below, and what happens is I start to uncover my primary transfer slots, okay? As I uncover, it's kind of hard to see, my, as I uncover my primary transfer slots, what happens is I start transitioning from my idle circuit, hopefully you can see these slots right here, okay? Those are primary transfer slots. I start to uncover those deeper and deeper, un you know, uncovering farther and farther up the slot, I move and transition off my idle circuit. So what's going on then? Well, hey, I'll tell you, as that happens, because my, my idle circuit is going bye-bye, I can no longer make the adjustment with, uh, with my idle mixture screws, okay? I lose that ability. So we talked about this before, right? We always adjust our idle mixture screws to pull the maximum inches of mercury. Well, if you find that as you're tweaking your idle mixture screws, you're not making any difference, chances are you're already exposing uh, the idle transfer slot way too much. Somewhere around 40 thousandths of exposure is where you start to pull over and off of the idle circuit, okay? so. And that's not very, that's not a lot. 40 thou, I don't know if that's 40 thou or not, but that's close. So you're talking very, a very small exposure on the primary transfer slot in order to basically nullify your idle circuit. And you definitely want to have an idle circuit in your favor if at all possible. All right, so I've got this crazy cam. Uh, it, maybe it's only eight, nine, 10 inches of mercury at idle. That's not a, that's not a lot, uh, or it could even be less. So there are a couple things I want to show you here, okay? So, because I want you to be on an idle circuit at idle, all right? So let's just set that aside again. I'm going to come back here to my underside, all right? The first thing I can do, hopefully, is to try and, and to try and get more air in, okay? Because that's what's really going on. I don't have any problem at this point delivering fuel. I got to deliver more air, okay? Because I'm probably very rich, all right, at this point at, for an idle speed. So I can come over to my secondary idle adjustment and I can crack my secondary throttle plates to where they are exposing a slight crack and hopefully that will allow more air into the motor uh, and I can maybe pull my curb idle back on my, uh, on my primary side, okay? Now, that's an easy trick. The more difficult trick, if that doesn't work, will require drilling a 332nd hole um, on the primary throttle plates or blades on the same side as my primary transfer slots. So on this carburetor, my transfer slots are on this side, so I would drill a 332nd hole in each primary throttle plate, uh, and hopefully that in itself would allow more air uh, enough air to compensate, uh, and I could pull my pull my curb idle back to where I was only exposing, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30 thousandths worth of transfer slot instead of 40, okay? Uh, now, that's something you want to do with the throttle shaft out. You got to be careful. A lot of the, 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 the bolts here for the throttle plates are pinned um, or, or swedged. I'm sorry, not pinned, but swedged. 
So you want to be careful when you take this apart, but I would encourage you to be uh, to maybe have a professional, have a carb shop do that for you, okay? But it is something to consider if you have a really radical cam uh, and you need, you would like to have an idle circuit working in your application, which I would encourage you to do, uh, something to consider, okay? So inlet circuit, idle circuit, um, let's see here, from idle, I think I went to main, I'm trying to think this would be a good one to do the main on. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the main circuit, all right? We got idle, we got inlet, uh, I, the main circuit, all right? So remember the mains, right? The mains are my primary metering block. Uh, all right, so the mains are my jets, uh, also their bleeds. Uh, I'm just going to mention the bleeds. I'm not going to talk into that at this point because bleeds are something that um, are definitely tunable. Uh, but if you have a carburetor that has swedged in bleeds, it's not designed to be tinkered with. Uh, can you do things up here still even if they're swedged and they're not removable? Sure you can, but I'm not going to go there, okay? I don't feel comfortable bringing you into that mess at this point. But Holly did design the other side of that circuit with jets. The jets, as you know, are highly tunable. When you dial in for jets, be sure you dial your jets in for maximum mile per hour, okay? If you're a racer, mile per hour is everything as far as, as, far as carburation tuning goes, really. You're really not dialing in for ET, or any type of time, you're always looking for a mile per hour, okay? In a general sense, that's true with carburation and dialing in carburetors. Same thing for the, for the main, same thing for jets, okay? So keep jetting up as, uh, as your plugs read, uh, as your performance improves, as your mile per hour improves, up to the point that your mile per hour might start to fall off or fall flat. When I no longer increase, I probably wanna stop. If I fall back in mile per hour, I definitely want to go back one or two sizes in jets and see if I pick up again or if I've maxed. Uh, also, I can dial in uh, my mains by watching what's going on in the rear view mirror. Um, as I get out on my test lap, my test circuit, my, my, my own little private place where I do my tuning on the road, uh, I, can, I can watch and see what's going on. Now, as I, as I lay into the throttle, uh, from part throttle or, or from just maybe a steady state cruise, I'm, I might get a little puff of, uh, of black smoke from the accelerator pump circuit uh, transitioning me from cruise or steady state into the main or deeper into the main. That should dissipate in a second or a second and a half. If I'm still getting dark fumes or dark smoke, black smoke from my tail looking out the back, then chances are I'm jetted too high on my main circuit at that point. And I would again pull back one or two jet sizes, then go for the same tune or the same drive and see if my tune is, uh, is dialed in a little closer, okay? Uh, so for, for, for mains, off of the jets, dial in for mile per hour or until you see that black smoke in the back. Okay, so uh, there, now I'm trying to think from there, I think I went to accelerator pump circuit next. So off the accelerator pump circuit, uh, we talked about this a little bit, but I want to bring you uh, a little farther along in that at this point and talk about a few tips. Uh, okay, so remember accelerator pump circuit was my, my pump housing, my diaphragm, my pump lever, uh, my pump arm, the uh, accelerator pump cam off of the throttle shaft because the throttle shaft is what actuates my assembly, right? Remember that? Um, also, just to be sure, anytime you tinker with the accelerator pump stroke, uh, the, uh, the change a diaphragm, change a, uh, a cam, uh, be sure that you come back and check your 10,000th clearance, as I mentioned before, uh, at wide open throttle. That way you don't hurt your diaphragm, okay? So I'm just gonna let this fall apart again, right here. And let's talk about a few specifics, okay? Um, squirters, okay? If you have an old school Holly, it probably has this block style squirter, okay? You can see the uh, orifices here where the fuel would, would come out uh, on the pump shot, okay? Uh, some Hollies have uh, this type of squirter. Now this isn't a tube style yet and it, it is dramatically improved over the block. I would not recommend a block for a performance four barrel, okay? They do show up on Hollies. It is a Holly part, you can still get them, but I would not recommend it for a performance four barrel. This is the first level of, of booster that I would even consider. 
uh, is a cylindrical style and it does give you that uh, that little stub to help get your shot uh, aimed out toward the booster okay not bad but there's better okay this is probably the the squirter style that I would recommend most um, and the reason being is because it does have pressed in tubes that actually get the fuel shot right toward the top or right off of the body uh, of the booster and that's where our maximum venturi effect is going on remember and we want to be part of that venturi effect we want the fuel to be uh, highly uh, exposed to the venturi effect so that it gets stratified and starts to stretch and it because it gets stretched it gets pulled into the to the emulsion and and it's just a wonderful thing when all that happens and it reaches the valve it burns very well creates lots of power uh, Okay, so a, a tube style booster, okay, or pardon me, a tube style um, squirter, okay. Also, some Hollies come out of the box with a booster, or I keep wanting to say booster, I don't know why, a squirter bolt that is not hollow. Now, some come hollow, some do not. Whenever you get into that point to where you're just tuning and changing a squirter, I would encourage you to pick up a hollow tube or a hollow uh, tube style uh, squirter bolt okay it's 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 a cheap performance improvement you'll never have to worry about enough fuel flow uh, up to your squirter and out on the pump discharge or out on the pump squirt okay by running a hollow bolt all right so there now uh, tuning again it may be for an automatic, an auto, a quick automatic, okay? Maybe this is a, 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 a very aggressive or rather aggressive streetcar, an automatic. Uh, I would say up front you might experience better tuning or better tuning results by changing booster size first before tinkering with cam profile. Uh, manual transmission cars, might you might find, are the opposite. There it might be better to dial in with pump cams uh, before going to a, a boost or squirter size. Boy, I got the booster thing on the brain. Anyhow, uh, squirter size maybe would be a secondary thing to look at after dialing in some cam changes uh, for a manual transmission. Also, race cars, uh, dedicated race cars, uh, you might find that it's going to be a combination of both cam and booster, or cam and squirter. Pardon me, here we go. Okay, so stop that, Norm. Um, all right, so inlet, idle, main, accelerator pump, uh, power. Okay, so power. Remember, power was, was what? The power circuit was inside my bowl, attached to my primary metering block, and it was my power valve, right? Okay, and power valves were rated in mercury, inches of mercury. So we're looking for vacuum again. Remember we talked about this guy before? got to have i'm telling you it's the handy dandy um, use that for idle circuit for for power circuit for for all kinds of tuning okay um, thinking about power valves and the power circuit okay this bad boy right here our power valve holly has a couple of different styles of power valves this one is the one i recommend first of all the gasket has a machined flange that takes its shoulder down below the level of the opening okay also the opening itself is slotted it's not just a hole or two or three it does have the higher flow slots okay so this is really the power valve to run all right now also i want to tell you maybe one or two more things on on the power circuit as you have this more aggressive build you're dialing in for performance you're, you're going racing you're dedicated toward competition uh, heavy, uh, heavy duty, uh, you know, lots of aggressive motoring perhaps. Um, don't be afraid to let your power valve number drop down, okay? It's important that you dial in your power circuit correctly. Uh, and what I mean by that is, if I've got this, this really aggressive motor with uh, a large overlap cam, lots of lift, lots of duration, uh, lots of wind in the cylinder, and I do, you know, maybe I'm pulling that eight, nine, 10 inches of mercury at idle, uh, then I really need to think about uh, not using that 9.5 or that 9.0 higher rated power valve because as soon as I tip in, I'm on the power valve, it's flowing. I might not want that yet. In fact, there have been cases with friends of mine and a couple racers that I know that they were on the power circuit at idle, okay? 
the motor only pulled four and a half, five, six inches of mercury, what happens if they have a nine or a six and a half rated power valve? Lo and behold, they're, they're already pulling the fuel through this orifice, okay? Way over the top. So at idle, you couldn't even be around the car. Your eyes stung, you walked away smelling like gasoline. It was horrible. So to dial in your power valve, don't be afraid to drop it down, okay? It will still function. It might wait a little bit longer like it's supposed to before it opens, but it will still operate, okay? So you can dial in your power valve off of that uh, vacuum reading link we talked about before. As you get more aggressive though, I would ask you to consider keeping the, uh, keeping the tune between what you saw originally in your inches of mercury and what we're tuning for now uh, in a narrower parameter, okay? You, it might be that you want the power valve to come on a hair quicker than what we were talking about before. And again, you can dial in the power circuit by watching what's going on in the rear view mirror, by watching your mile per hour, okay? Uh, one last thing on the power valve or the power circuit, and that would be our, our power valve block off or power valve plug, okay? Uh, manufactured by different guys or companies in the industry. When you do that, you're really giving up your, anything with partial throttle or mid throttle, okay? There are circumstances and situations that that's not an issue though. Think about your drag racer. He goes from virtually foot off the throttle to hard throttle, full throttle, and, and virtually nowhere in between, okay? That type of an application, it may be okay, it may be suitable for that person or that to, to experiment with a plug on the power valve. Now, if you do that, you gotta remember, this little puppy right here is now solid. It's not gonna flow all of that volume of fuel through the orifice. So you have to make up for that difference on the, the jet, okay, or on the jet, okay? So you wanna bring your jet size up anywhere from six to 10 sizes. And, and if I were doing that myself, I would try to land toward the middle. I would not wanna bring this in at a lean point. I'd rather come in a hair heavy or a hair rich and then dial back to lean, okay? Uh, so at least six to 10 jet sizes on your main jets when you blow out, or pardon me, when you take out and, and bypass the power circuit by plugging your power valve. Ha, ah, okay, let's see here, idle inlet, uh, accelerator pump, mains, do we, uh, we did mains power circuit. Um, secondaries, okay, so secondaries. Um, oh, I know one last, I wanna show you this thing here. Uh, this is really cool, and this comes back to the power valve and the power circuit. Um, let, let me show you this. I do wanna, this is very important, and it's a good tuning piece, and it's, uh, it's definitely for power, okay? And it's an it's a economical improvement. As you notice, this is a competition style uh, HP from Holly. But what you see right up front here, this is a, a vent baffle, or they used to call it the, the, the uh, uh, primary metering block whistle style of vent or baffle because it looks like a whistle. But uh, follow, do the imagination thing with me for a moment, okay? So I'm racing, I'm going through gallons, gallons per hour, really maybe maybe even approaching hundreds of gallons per hour under the right conditions okay so fuel is just basically you know coming in and going over okay and i'm racing so there's there's things going on it's very dynamic fuel is rolling fuel is sloshing and i'm and my power valve is open and my jets are really pulling fuel also so my power valve is open my jets are pulling fuel this little puppy right here not only keeps me from sloshing out through my vent, okay, and, in, and, and then spilling over, which would not be good, um, but it also keeps cavitation to a minimum. Now, cavitation is what happens when you start to get that swirl effect. It's like a whirlpool in your bowl. And it happens a lot up by the, the metering block because as all of this is going on here, this swirl, this pull of fuel, it creates that cavity down below. And if and it's against this horizontal, or probably this vertical surface, then I start to get cavitation at the top to where my, my fuel just can't keep up sometimes. That's why I kind of suggested bumping your pressure. That's why I kind of suggested bumping your fuel level, okay? Uh, was to help you avoid cavitation in both bowls. 
Um, I'm going to look at secondary side here in just a moment, but I do want to bring this to your attention. This is a nice piece. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and I would encourage you to really think about it uh, for your uh, more aggressive or performance tuning type uh, for your Holly four barrel. Okay, so since we're on this puppy anyhow, let's just take a look here. Now we have uh, secondary side tuning uh, performance tips. So I've got I've got a vacuum secondary carburetor. I have a mechanical secondary carburetor. And let, let's take a look at uh, what goes on on the secondary side here, okay? So, let's start with our mechanical secondary because it's actually a hair easier to dial in um, for performance than uh, perhaps the vacuum secondary carburetor. So, this bad boy, okay, float. Oh, I have another uh, vent baffle or whistle, really good. Uh, this side, I have a metering block again, very almost a mirror image uh, or, or virtual mirror image of my primary side. Okay, so I've got a block, therefore I know I have jets, and I have a power valve. Um, consider stagger jetting if that's what you find works. A lot of a lot of people end up at a stagger. Um, sometimes where uh, where you might find that you run a four, five, or six size larger jet in the secondary side. If you find that works for you, that's great. Uh, sometimes it has to do with uh, cylinder head construction, the intake manifold construction, uh, as to what type of stagger. Uh, but generally speaking, most secondaries do run a larger size jet uh, than the primary side. Uh, that might help you dial in the secondary side on your uh, mechanical secondary uh, carburetor. Also, accelerator pump circuit, again, okay, I've got a secondary pump, I can come back, I, now I can do a, a, a cam change, I can do a squirter change, um, I can, I'm almost certain this carburetor has hollow tubes or hollow uh, tube style bolts, so I don't have to worry about that at this point. Uh, let's see here, there, uh, and, and again, dial in for mile per hour, dial in till I see black smoke. Uh, you know, that, that wasted fuel, that unburnt fuel going through the tail uh, in my exhaust. Um, secondaries here are pretty straightforward. Um, very similar, as I said, we talked about that two barrel, two barrel thing before. The analogy still holds true. Uh, even more so maybe as you see it sitting here, okay? Vacuum secondary type carburetors are just a slight difference uh, then, or slightly different than what we just talked about there on the mechanical secondary carburetors. And that being, um, I think we just talked about this perhaps in the last episode, uh, but I want to show a couple tips today, a couple tuning things um, that we didn't get to the last time. Okay, so again, back to my favorite 4160 style carburetor. This is an Avenger series Holly, so it does have a metering or pardon me a, a secondary metering block so I do have jets now this one I do not have a secondary power valve uh, and I have my jet extensions my notched float you know all of that is good uh, and here now think about your secondary bowl for a second okay secondary side and, and this would hold true for, for for either way so I'm kind of backtracking for just a moment fuel level in the secondary when we talked, I think, last time about how the secondary operates, it's looking for a vacuum pulse developed on the primary side because I'm usually, well, obviously, I, the primary always opens first no matter what carburetor you have, okay? So my, any type of venturi effect, any type of venting or vacuuming or, or pressure has to come from a throttle plate that's already cracked or being cracked. That feeds my secondary. Saying that to say this, I can dial in the feel of that vacuum, uh, of that, uh, that signal. Let me call it a signal at this point. I can dial in the way that that signal pulls over by controlling the fuel level in my secondary bowl. So I, on the secondary side, I would encourage you to be at least halfway up your sight glass, uh, if you have a sight glass type carburetor, or halfway up or larger uh, on your sight plug if you have a sight plug type carburetor, okay? And we kind of discussed that a moment ago for the primary side. On the secondary side, if I find that one and a half flat adjustment might give me one millimeter, 
or then I might go two flats or two and a half, maybe even three flats uh, to see if I can pull my fuel up even taller in that bowl. Okay, so back to dialing in the secondary side on a vacuum secondary carburetor. Fortunately, I have jets here. Uh, if I didn't have jets and I had a more traditional vacuum secondary like this 3310, I would have a plate. There are plates available. Uh, I believe Holly still makes three or four different ones that have different orifice sizing so that you can dial the plate in, uh, not, not as easily um, as jets, mind you, but you can still dial the plate in on a traditional vacuum secondary, like a 3310, okay? On this particular Avenger style, I have my jets, as I said. I would, again, dial in uh, for up to that point to get more mile per hour up to that point of finding the black smoke in my rear view mirror. Also, the, the, the trick here for vacuum secondaries, okay? Let's take a look. All right, vacuum secondary carburetors. I'm gonna open my, my primary side all the way open. Okay, I'm at wide open throttle and nothing happened to my secondaries, okay? Now, at that point though, my wide open throttle on the primaries is kind of like riding in a cam here on the secondaries. So it says, you know what, secondaries, you are allowed to open now anytime you want to, but remember it's controlled by my vacuum pot. My vacuum pot is dialed in by spring tension. The springs, remember those guys, right? Different springs, different tension, different ratings. So they, one's light, one's heavy, a couple in the middle. They dial in for different vacuum ratings, things like that, because my secondary carburetor is dialed in by vacuum. So as the motor says give, it gives, okay? So now the tech tip or the tuning tip here for us today would be to use a paper clip. And I'll tell you what's even better than this now that I think about it is a little micro alligator clip, okay? You can sometimes find those where you might find soldering supplies like that uh, because they tend to hold on tighter. But I, the paper clip is what I've always used in the past um, and it does work. So what you're going to watch for is I'm going to bring this all the way up to where, to where I, I, I'm up against the bottom of my housing, okay? So that I know that any time, any distance that my, my rod travels, it will be picked up on my little gauge, my little tool here, the paper clip. So I go for a little test drive. I don't have to go far. I just need to go someplace far enough and throttle enough that I have the opportunity to get the secondaries open, okay? Now, let's say I did that, all right? Now, and let's just say my throttle plates opened that far, okay? And then I came back to the garage, I came back to the pits, I popped the hood, uh, I might wait a moment or two for some fuel pressure to blow off or to stabilize so that I don't get the big squirt down my throat. But regardless, I'm gonna come over open my, my primary side throttle all the way up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open, or open the throttle plates by pushing the rod up until my paper clip seats on the bottom of the housing. At that point, and my, I'm gonna take a look down the carburetor. Now, I'm, my engine's not running. Never look down the throat of a running carburetor. Okay, always use a mirror for that. But my, my motor is off. I, like I said, I might have waited a moment or two to, for my fuel pressure to stabilize or decrease so I don't get that big squirt. And I'm gonna give an eyeball to my secondaries. Now I can see some light pass there, uh, but I'm definitely not at wide open throttle. So at this point, what I might do is go to a lighter spring in my housing, okay? All right, so I'd go for a test drive again, uh, You know, come back, check the position of my uh, of my paper clip again. And uh, hopefully this time I've dialed in or, or got a little more uh, throttle position or throttle plate opening uh, than I had before. And I would just take an eyeball, you know, do the same thing, let it sit for a moment, stabilize, maybe let a little fuel pressure to bleed off, uh, and then come back and check, open up till I reach the bottom of my paper clip on the housing, right, right about there. Um, okay, and now, you know what, hey, maybe this time I actually gained uh, some more daylight. I may still not be at wide open throttle, okay? Now, it, you might find that wide open throttle is not the maximum performance level for your vacuum secondary carburetor. 
it, like I said, it's going to come back to what the motor says to give, okay, which, and I'm saying that off a signal or off a vacuum, okay, um, and that's why I tend to lean toward vacuum secondary carburetors in and of themselves, personally. I mean, I love double pumpers, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I'm trying to think if I, I got a mess, so I must have covered something. Uh, let's see here, inlet, idle, uh, power, mains, uh, accelerator pump, secondary side. Uh, don't forget, you know, your, your critical things like the ten thousandths on the accelerator pump arm. Anytime you make an adjustment, always do that. Always do that at wide open throttle. Uh, watch your torque specs on your bowl. Always crisscross. Watch your torque specs on your base plate flanges. Always crisscross. Um, don't over tighten. Um, like the vent bowl whistles, they're great, great. Uh, notch floats, jet extensions. Uh, don't be afraid to go smaller on power valves when you need to. Uh, always run, or whenever you start to work with a squirter, go to the hollow screw. All right, so maybe just one or two more things. Um, always check, physically check uh, your throttle. Make sure you're at wide open throttle when you are at wide open throttle. That could be, uh, there could be a bind in your linkage or in the cable. Uh, but truly check that you're, you're at wide open throttle. Uh, that's always one way to get more power. And then um, also think about this, when Holley's tune or uh, design their carburetors, they're based, in, then they're based upon the fact that they're uh, designed and tuned for sea level and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you'll just think along with me on this, as altitude goes up, there become less oxygen molecules in the air, uh, less mo oxygen molecules in the airstream, so you have uh, a tendency to have more fuel versus air going into the uh, carburetor. So every 2,000 feet you go up in altitude, you want to drop a jet size, okay? And that's a pretty standard formula for Hollies. And uh, also along that same line, as temperature changes, um, Temperature, as temperature goes up, you have also, you have less oxygen molecules per given, you know, range of temperature or whatever. And that's why so many racers uh, have weather stations or keep a weather log and track. They, they might change uh, jets once or twice within the given course of a day, going from daytime racing to evening racing when it's cooler. So uh, just a couple things to keep in mind there uh, going forward as you tune for performance. Uh, Gosh, if I missed anything, and I'm sure I did, uh, please let me know. I loved your comments. Uh, I try to get back to you as quick as possible. If you want to subscribe, you can do that over here. There's more videos uh, in here, I believe. So, hey, thank you for watching a Quick Flicks episode here on tuning, super tuning, power tuning, Holly 4150, 4160 series, performance, four barrels. Have a great day.